Hi everybody, I'm Brian Mudd, a fan of South Plains politics. Here's your talking points for this week. And this week, the silence is broken. Love of Representative Dustin Burroughs talking with us about how his now infamous meeting with the Texas House Speaker and Empower Texans head Michael Quinn Sullivan changed Texas. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters. This is Talking Points with Brian Mudd. Sponsored by Capital Mortgage Services. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This week, The Gambler. Now, we remember the old Kenny Rogers song about knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. The missing line is that you also need to know when to bet big, whether it's a bluff or not. And it seems like that's where we are in this whole Bond and Burroughs Sullivan meeting fiasco. Everybody's starting to play their hand. Look at the timing of the past week. At about seven Wednesday night, Lubbock Representative Dustin Burroughs takes to Facebook, touting all the success of the last legislative session, announcing he'll run for re-election in District 83. The following morning, Morning, Governor Abbott endorses Burroughs' re-election bid. Then an hour later, an interview with the incomparable Chad Hasty on his radio show on KFYO. That interview was all over the state in minutes. And ending his public silence to talk about what he says did and didn't happen in that meeting with Michael Quinn Sullivan. Remember, Sullivan runs a political website and blog and has given a lot of grief to Democrats and Republicans who don't live up to his conservative standards and directs a lot of money to candidates who do. And he still claims to have that recording of the meeting that he hasn't released. And for the first time in quite a while, we bring in District 83 Representative Dustin Burroughs. Good for you to take a few minutes for us. Ron, always happy to be on your show. The House Investigations Committee has now pushed the investigation of the meeting off to Texas Rangers. you agree it was necessary to do that? So here, here's what I'll tell you. Okay. You know, if we're talking about this, this is the worst of politics. We're talking about, you know, secret recordings with spy pens and drip, drip, drip. <laughs> we're only going to tell you certain things about it. And I'm so happy this is out of politics hands and in the Texas Rangers hands. They are the premier investigative, you know, branch out there probably in Texas probably the entire United States and I'm looking forward for them to coming back and saying what I already know is nothing illegal happened in that yeah. meeting. Hey, have you been interviewed by Rangers yet? Have not yet but look forward to answering anything anybody has. Okay so so with that in mind though with everything still up in the air a little bit why are you here because you're an attorney every attorney I've ever talked to says to, to a client don't say anything so why talk now? Well, first off, number one, I mean, make sure it's very clear. I announced two days ago I'm running for re-election. We had a fantastic session last session. Historic for our school districts. You're seeing teachers across the district getting pay raises. Uh, you're watching property tax owners. And, you know, next cycle, actually, a really great bill that I helped shepherd through. And you saw that Texas Tech have a historic session. So I'm very proud of what we did. I was encouraged by many people to go and build upon those successes and go forward. Uh, after I announced, Governor Abbott came out less than 12 hours, fully endorsed me talked about those accomplishments. That's that had to be a little ray of sunshine in the middle of all this, too. Well, it was, it, I think, very highly of our governor. He's mm -hmm. done a phenomenal job. He's cast a really good vision for the state, and for him to come out and basically say those good things about me was very humbling. So I did want to go ahead and get out. Obviously, my preference would be the tapes would be out there. People can right. hear for themselves, and we could talk about something that happened 75 days ago. But until then, you know, I'm going to talk about the record, the things I'm running on, and what I want to do for West Texas. Yeah. So the meeting with the Speaker and Mr. Sullivan took place June 12th in Austin, quite a while ago. Ago. Do you know who asked for the meeting to happen in the first place? My understanding, the assumption that I'm under, is Mr. Sullivan texted and wanted to have a meeting. Uh -huh. um, I will tell you, I happened to be in town for signing a property tax reform right. bill. Um, I went in there in good faith. You know, Mr. Sullivan is a arch critic of the Texas House. Uh, he'd been beaten up on conservative members that happened to used to agree with a lot of the things that he said. We had historic losses in 2018. I lost 12 of my Republican colleagues. We lost a lot of judicial races across the state, and I think that's really going to negatively impact uh, the judiciary. Ted Cruz barely won. I mean, mm -hmm. this was an eye-opening thing, and a lot of it had to do with, you know, primaries and people not being ready for 2020. And so I went in there in good faith to answer the complaints, talk about things that, you know, I wanted to get done, things that we actually did agree on, mm -hmm. um, and really wanting to make the focus drive to 2020 and making sure we do that because it's so much more difficult to pass conservative reforms good for West Texas when you have fewer Republicans to do that. Right. Was that the first time you'd met Mr. Sullivan? I have met him at least one time before, is right. to the best of my recollection. I may have met him before then, but he and I are certainly, you know, not friends, not close. Right, yeah. So you don't think a lot of him and his work? 
<laughs> um, you know, look, if you look at the issues that he says he stands for, there's some things I agree with him on. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the legislation he's wanted to pass, there's things I agree with him on. There's also things I don't agree with him on. I think some of the tactics and some of the things he writes, you know, somebody told me the other day they've never seen him do a retraction. They've never do, seen him do an apology for anything he said was incorrect. And, well, you know, not real proud of that. And the first time people, I think a lot of people have heard of him was when he, there, he and his folks made the allegations of misappropriation of funds by then tech chancellor Bob Duncan, which turned out to be false. And, and I don't think anyone ever really called him on it, more or less. Yeah. I mean, Senator Duncan is uh, one of the most decent, honorable men I know, and uh, that was really poor for him. You know, he, and he's been critical of you and, and the speaker and others for not going far enough on some issues. So did you perceive him, or was there conversations before all this uh, about him being a problem moving forward? Look, I mean, so here's the thing. If you look at the Republicans in the House, I mean, there are some Republicans who kind of really like him and they gravitate towards what he says and you know they listen to him. There are some Republicans who built their entire career on being against everything he said. Most people are somewhere in between that they you know probably tune him out, don't pay as much attention to him, but for a certain group of Republicans, you know, it is not necessarily Mr. Sullivan. Mm. It's the people who follow him. And they're good people, you know, they're good conservative, you know, people around the state and to have messaging going out that's, you know, flagrantly false or misleading or things of that nature, I mean, it puts a strain on some of our good Republicans just trying to do the work and certainly happy to push back against some of that narrative with him or anybody else. Mm -hmm. I have an open door policy. There's very few people, I can't think of anybody I've refused to meet with. Well, so with, with, with that in mind, is that why you take the meeting to begin with? Because I, I, people seem ha, have asked me a lot, why did, why did they even do it? You'd had some political capital to play with now after a successful session. His influence, at least on the surface, appeared to have sort of waned. You didn't hear a lot about him around a lot of circles. So why bother talking to him to begin with? So first off, I took the meeting because I happened to be in town. The speaker asked me if I'd right. come by. You know, uh, Speaker Bonin had a tremendously good session. And certainly, I don't care if somebody is for the House, not for the House, if they have influence or they don't have influence, if we're going to talk about policy, mm -hmm. or we're going to talk about things that are important, I'll look to find common ground with just about anyone. First this week's poll question, are you confident in Mr. Burroughs' ability to represent District 83? And well, all of us here in the legislature moving forward. Talk to us on our KMAC News Facebook page on everythinglubbock.com. Click on Talking Points and give us your opinion there. Coming up, proof that lawmakers' commitment to giving more money to schools is helping your property taxes, kind of. And we'll continue our chat with Representative Burroughs and Sullivan's allegations of quid pro quo.